Long Island City is not a blank slate for developers. As we saw on a visit this January, it's a city with a people and a history all its own. What would development look like if the place and its people were given as much care as a visiting corporation? That's the question posed by Bishop Mitchell G. Taylor, a Long Island City son. The same care that we take in making a plan to accommodate the richest, largest company in the world coming to New York City less than a half mile away from the largest public housing development in the world needs to go into the capital repair deficit that exists just a half mile away. Hey man, you all right? All right. Good, good. My name is Bishop Mitchell G. Taylor. I live in Long Island City and have been since 1966. My exposure to Long Island City was because of my dad, Bishop Moses Taylor, who they named a street after him just a block away from here. My dad had an interesting love for Long Island City. He started his church in Long Island City in 1961. My whole association with people and Long Island City was the housing developments because all the members of my dad's church came from the housing developments. We're at the corner of Queensbridge Houses. Remember, Queensbridge is the largest public housing development in the country, 96 buildings, six block radius, 3,142 apartments, 8,000 people are on the lease, potentially 16,000 people live here. This is Queensbridge. This is us. Probably if you were somewhere else, people would immediately say to you, the gentrification train has come. But in public housing, we have a very unique opportunity. I'll tell you why. Because in a sense, we're living in a protected community. My thought is that as we see Long Island City developing, that creates entrepreneurial opportunities for folks that need a little push, just a little technical assistance in you know, putting their business plan, putting their business in place. When there's new development, new people, new opportunities, all kinds of opportunities present themselves to you. Now, here we have another mammoth opportunity, and that's Amazon. I'm not saying that Amazon should solve the city's problems, but the point is, something like this coming to our neighborhood, there should be some residual, at the very least, benefit from them being here. So this is the center of hope here. And if we can get inside here. One, one of our models here at the Center of Hope is that there's no hope like hope at the center. And the second part of that is you may not belong to the center of hope, but the center of hope belongs to you. And so we have always been a church that focused on the socioeconomic condition of folks in our neighborhoods, you know, not I mean, you know, it, yes, it's about spiritual things, connecting to God, but, you know, also hey, you connecting to God alone is not a guarantee for personal success or wealth building or living life good. My whole thought in, you know, bringing this focus to public housing was that no one was talking about it. No one cared about residents that live in public housing and the challenges that they faced. And we realized that one church couldn't solve the mammoth problems that exist in public housing. So he wanted to create an alliance so we can change the historic pattern of dealing with poverty, which was usually from the outside in. We wanted to change that dynamic and do it from the inside out, and not from the top down, but from the bottom up. And that's what we did. This is a part of our Youth Career Pathways Center. Hey, how you doing? Excellent, excellent. How's everything? You all right? Excellent, 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 excellent. What's happening back here right now? So it's a workshop where you're trying to see how well you're able to market yourself. You gave my elevator pitch just now, I told him. I'm Derek Willis, I'm the youth mentor here for Urban Up. Now my job is to sit down and help our participants get on the path that they see themselves growing. My man. Derek is also a part of Inside Track Public Relations Company as well. He's an expert web designer, so he does all our web work. Great guy. 
Why did I create Urban Outbound? Because I wanted to create a ladder for people to get out of poverty. I, I, wanted, I wanted them to stop waiting for someone to do something for them and do something for themselves. And I realized if one, if one voice spoke, it could easily be ignored. But if a thousand voices spoke, it could never be ignored. And so we built employment center, we built entrepreneurial <laughs> development centers, we built cooperative business development centers. We have technical uh, business assistants here on, on uh, the Long Island City campus. Uh, we have one-on-one -on -one financial counseling. We have youth development, both academic and vocational. And we own our own bank, the Urban Upbound Federal Credit Union. So it's the ideology, the thought that we're taking those steps. Because my dad said to me, you want to make change? You got to own money. How do you own money? Open your own bank. If the state, the city, and Amazon do those collaborative things through public and private partnerships, I think that will change the city and the opportunity and access for residents exponentially like we've never seen before. My greatest hope that residents of Long Island City would be connected to the new economy and not be left out.